Hey, hey everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for another X-Men 97 Season 1 Episode 2 Review. This episode is called Mutant Liberation Begins. So, let's get into it. So this episode starts off with, the, with a little recap of last episode and then we get the opening. And the opening changed up a little bit because we actually get Magneto in the opening this time right before Cyclops, which is really cool. Now last episode, obviously you saw when I got to the very end, a computer cut off. So at the end of this episode, if I can get to it, uh, I'll saw like the last few scenes of the last episode. There's only like one or two scenes that was left at the last um, in the last episode. Anyway, here's Magneto in the opening right before Cyclops. It looks really cool, and I love how he makes the X with his giant like steel beams. I mean, come on, that was kind of cool. I mean, that was kind of cool to me. That was dope. And he also saw um Dark Phoenix inside this episode too. I thought was pretty cool. Dark Phoenix doesn't come up in the episode. They reference it, but, you know, he doesn't actually show up in the episode. But, I mean, it was still kind of cool to see Dark Phoenix. Anyway, after that, we cut over to Coney, Corny Island. And the Ferris wheel, something happened to it to where now it's falling apart. And people are still up there. So, the fire department is trying to get them. But, by the time they get up there, it's too late. The whole Ferris wheel falls over. But then it stops and starts to levitate and put itself back together. I was there, everybody's looking around, like, what's going on? The news is, like, you know, looking around with the cameras, and it's Magneto. And they see him, they're like, yo, you know, it's, it's Magneto. Did, no way. Like, you know, they're really confused. Like, why would he even help people? You know, Magneto, normally he's, like, really evil. But in the last series, you know, he wasn't, like, all that bad. I mean, yeah, he did do some kind of crazy stuff, but he wasn't too bad, actually. And most of the time, like, you know, <laughs> he's kind of, you know, trying to kill humans or trying to enslaved them but they enslaved mutants so the fact that he's helping people normal people obviously everybody's kind of shocked they don't know how to respond even cyclops and everybody else is really like baffled at what's happening and cyclops is watching the news and gene comes in and he goes did the did sorry did the professor not trust me to tell me that he wanted you know magneto to run the x-men instead of him and then gene goes maybe she maybe he did trust you but maybe this is a gift, you know, because now we can leave the X-Men and they'll be safe. I mean, they would have been safe either way. They could have handled it by themselves. But now they have someone like Magneto who's powerful and a really good leader. So, you know, hey, maybe he's supposed to, you know, maybe he didn't, maybe it's not that he didn't trust you. Maybe it's just, you know, he gave this as to, he gave this to us as a gift. And then we cut over to the Morlocks and a bunch of friends of humanity people come and capture them. And Magneto comes in and saves them. And I was like, geez, man, like, even the Morlocks were saying, like, you know, you guys treat us so badly on the surface world that we resorted to coming down to the sewers to live amongst each other in harmony. You guys got to come down here to even mess with us? And one of the friends of humanity people were like, hey, we can't sleep at night resting well upstairs if you guys, if we know that you scum are down here. Even Magneto was like, you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> like, you know, you guys are ridiculous. You guys come all the way down to the depths of the sewers just to terrorize a mutant. This is disgusting. <laughs> this is so disgusting and I hate you guys for this. And he takes them out pretty easily. I mean, it's Magneto. <laughs> it's not really going to be too hard to take those guys out. After that, we cut over to the rest of the X-Men talking at the war table about the whole Magneto situation. Because at the end of the last episode, we find out that in Charles Xavier's will, he wanted Magneto to run the X-Men. So now he's running the X-Men. And they're like, yo, this can't be true. Like, this is ridiculous. So everybody's going around the table, giving their opinions. Uh, Rogue is the only one, really, that wants to sort of accept Magneto to give him a second chance. Because, you know, Charles Xavier would have given him a second chance. Why don't we do that? And <laughs> the funniest line in this whole conversation was Bishop. He's there. And he goes, you know what? In all the futures I've seen, I never saw one of Magneto running the X-Men. This is kind of new to me. <laughs> Gambit, he goes, hmm, maybe we should go back in time and uh, change this future, no? <laughs> that was kind of funny to me. I don't know why. Uh, eventually, Magneto, he walks in. And I really like this one shot of him standing in front of a map. Because he says that he's transferring the Morlocks over to Genosa, like the mutant loving island. He goes, you know, Charles Xavier probably sort of used his, like, richness. Because he's, like, really rich. He, sort of, he probably sort of used all his wealth and money. That's what I was thinking of. I wanted to say wealth, but I couldn't, in the moment, I couldn't think of the word wealth. I said richness, <laughs> but he said he uses wealth to do stuff like this. Though. Now, I'm doing, you know, moving mutants over to Genosa and stuff like that instead of making the X-Men. I mean, hey, easy come, easy go, it's, it's whatever. 
But like I said, I do like this one shot of Magneto standing in front of like the map he's looking at, and you see all the other X Men in the background. I love this shot. This looks so cool. I also could use this as my thumbnail, but there's not like a lot of space in this shot to put stuff, in, unless I'm a couple of characters. I don't really like doing that. So I was like, could use it, but you know, like I said, it's not a lot of space. I mean, it's a little bit. I, I guess I'll see. Well. If you clicked on the video, you already see the thumbnail. But as of this moment, me recording, I haven't made it yet. I usually make it after, so that kind of sucks. Anyway, while they're talking, Cyclops wants Jean to use her telekinesis powers to probe his mind so they know that he's on the good side. And Jean goes, no, that's an evasion of privacy. And that's the kind of thing that Professor X had, too. He didn't like to use his powers on people that didn't, like, willingly let him. So, you know, she's trying to be good like him. And she also says, like, even if I did probe his mind and he's, like, on our side for now, that's not going to let me see into his mind in the future. Because in the future, he could change and go on the bad side again. So even if I say he's good now, he, he could change. So it wouldn't really even matter. Plus, you know, I'm not going to do it against his will. I'm not like that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, trying to, <clears throat> I'm not trying to be like that. Um, Cyclops and uh, Magneto, they argue for a little bit. And then eventually he goes, well, it took all this to happen. For you X-Men, with, with everything with Charles Xavier and, and how people are against mutants. It took all of this to happen for you guys to finally realize that Xavier can finally make a mistake. You know, I knew this for a minute. <laughs> but, you know, hey, you guys know it too. And I want to accept his wishes and try to do things his way. So I didn't kill those Friends of Humanity people down in the sewer. I harmed them, but they're not dead. I am trying to make a difference. And he walks out. Then we cut over to Jean and Storm having a conversation. And while they're having a conversation, this is when they reference Dark Phoenix because he finds like a really old costume of hers, is Jean. And she goes, wow, the last time I wore this was when the Phoenix was taking control of me. Remember that? Like, you know, like there's a little reference to Dark Phoenix, but, you know, we don't actually see Dark Phoenix in the episode. And then she says, Storm, I need to talk to you. I need to tell you something. And you can't tell Scott. She goes, I won't promise come here what's the matter she goes with the baby coming i'm kind of nervous about it what if you know what if the baby is born a mutant you start like so you wanted to be born a human she goes you know i don't i don't know if it's born a mutant then how do we raise someone like that you know like how am i supposed to tell him that the world hates him and there's nothing we can do about it and there's people that's going to remind him that he's a mutant every single day like they did with us it's just it's going to be so heartbreaking and it's so terrifying to even think about that. And Storm goes, you know, from time to time, I do wonder if I was born human. You know, the temptation does get me sometimes, but I also think about what I can do with my mutant gifts for humanity and to save people and stuff like that. I also think about what my mutant gifts gave me. It brought me here to find this home, to find this family, to find a sister. That was really sweet. And, and Storm, I mean, that Storm, uh, Jean was like, okay. That was a really good storm. You got me. She starts crying. And she goes, you know, maybe I'm just a fool worrying about all this stuff. I sound so stupid. And then Storm goes, no, you don't sound stupid. You sound like a mother. Uh, that was a really nice scene between them. That's the specific scene people were complaining about. Could they release this before? I think they released this specific clip of this scene like two days ago before the episode when the movie came out. And everybody was like complaining about the animation. I thought it looked good. It was just that one scene of Eugene like, Sitting down to look kind of off. But other than that, it's, it's like really good. It's like it's just that one scene. Anyway, after that, we cut over to Magneto and a rogue inside of, I guess, Magneto's office. Or maybe it's Charles' office. But inside his office, and they start to talking. And Magneto specifically says that he used to wear this helmet because he could always, because, well, he specifically says that he always felt Charles's presence in his mind. He wasn't probing. Like, he knew he wasn't like, going in his mind to see stuff that he didn't want him to but just as a presence in there of friendship of comfort and he always wore his helmet to block the telekinesis from charles and rogue is like oh okay and so you knew that you couldn't go through your whole human hating plan and doing all this bad stuff if you knew your brother basically was in your mind comforting you so you had to block him out so you can do this not selfishly but you know he doesn't have that thing like like uh, his conscience like you know like like Charles is his conscience so you need a conscience doesn't take over 
But now that Xavier's gone, you know, there's no need to wear this. And we use the telekinesis to pull it over. And I was watching some videos about episode two. And I bas- I basically what the, the videos were saying was Rogue and Magneto, they used to have like a thing going on in some timelines in the comics. Because when they were talking, Magneto walks over to Rogue, grabs her glove, and starts to take it off. And I'm like, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> like, this guy's like old, she's young, number one. Number two... It, you know, I never heard of a Rogue slash Magneto, like, relationship ever. Apparently, that did happen in the comics at one point, but I never heard of that, so I was really surprised. And, number, you know, number three, like I said in the first episode, her powers, if you touch her bare skin, she sucks your life force. You could die. So, I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> you know? Like, in that moment, I was like, what is happening? And now, almost, until I watched those videos, I'm like, oh. Okay, I guess they're going to kind of hint at it. Like maybe that whole relationship thing maybe happened in the past or whatever. And they even bring that up too because Rogue members used to be somewhat of a bad guy back in the day. I thought she told the team, but she says the team can never find out. And I'm like, oh, okay. I thought, I thought they I thought she already knew. I mean, I thought the team already knew about that kind of stuff, but I guess not. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Anyway, after that, a bunch of um, helicopters come over to the X-Mansion. And <laughs> Magneto goes, everybody, get ready. And Cyclops goes, hey, those are the good guys. We can't fight them. And then, <laughs> they all to the point that guns at them. <clears throat> and Cyclops like, what the? He goes, yeah, you were saying? Anyway, they're here to arrest Magneto. And they tell Magneto to come quietly because their guns are, like, made out of non-metal. So he can't, like, use them against them or whatever. But Magneto uses the helicopters against them. He picks them all up, starts up the blades, and puts them really close and he goes, yeah, well, I mean, I can still do something. I can't use your guns, but I can still do something. And we get this really cool shot of when they pan back over to the X-Men. I mean, come on. This is dope. I wish Magneto was more in frame, like his face and everything. Like, maybe lower him a little bit in the middle between Beast and Cyclops and make him bigger. Boom. Perfect thumbnail shot. You know, that's a perfect deep shot. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Magneto says, if I come with you quietly, I will come over to a fair trial. I mean, I'll, I'll have a fair trial and everything like that. And she goes, of course. Magneto goes, okay then. I yield. Puts the helicopters down. Puts out his hand as they cuff him with regular handcuffs. And, uh, but they also put an inhibitor collar up there so he can't use his magnet. So he can't use his magnetic powers. And they take him away. And everybody is at the trial besides from Wolverine and Jean. Jean is obviously pregnant, so she can't be traveling like that. And Wolverine is supposed to, you know, watch over Jean. And it was a really cool scene because Jean didn't know this. She walks in on Logan watching the news. He goes, where's everybody? Logan was like, oh, you know, hey, they went over there to make sure nothing happens and to watch Magneto. Jean goes, what? Scott didn't tell me. And then Wolverine looks at uh, Jean. He goes, yeah, there's a lot of that going around. And she just walks away. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, from last episode about them leaving. I mean, it wasn't like a furious fire thing going on, but I mean, it's whatever. Anyway, after that, we cut over to one of the guys from the Friends of Humanity. Uh, the guy that had the scar on his face from the last episode. He was... Oh, <clears throat> I forget. Uh, I guess I can say it now. Yeah, okay, at the beginning of the episode, we see him using an inhibitor collar. Those things they put over mutants to like uh, drain their power. Not drain their powers, but when they put the collars on them, they can't use their powers. So he's taking the energy from the collar and putting it into a rifle gun. And then the very next scene, we see him with this whole getup on with a mask. And he has a ton of guns on his back. And that gun he was charging up with the same energy from the collars that, that neutralized mutant's powers, he has it. He goes, just give me a clear shot of Magneto and I can take it and aim. But I only get one shot out of this thing, so make sure it's clear. And then the very next scene is the trial. We get this really cool shot of Magneto and the handcuffs and the collar. And he let Magneto speak. And there's a ton of people outside of Friends of Humanity because, well, it's Friends of Humanity people outside that's protesting against this whole trial against Magneto. And it's also um, a bunch of, I guess, other mutant hating people that's not part of the Friends of Humanity. But, yeah, you know how they are. <laughs> you know how they are. Anyway, Magneto starts to speak. And he gets a, he does a really good speech. He goes, uh, when I was a boy, uh, my homes were burned to ass. Because we dared to be called God by a different name. Then my people hunted me. With those who had once hunted them. I was a freak born and mutant. An abomination to the mis, mis, mismed gods. In history, sad song 
there is a refrain. Believe differently, love differently, be different sex or skin, and be punished. We sing this song to one another, the oppressed become the oppressors. Xavier knew this and dreamed we could change, find harmony, a future where human and mutant could recoil us and pass, finally living together. You claim justice is overdue, indeed. But we sing, I mean, but so is healing. And then all the U.S. like Senate like lawyers, I mean, lawyers, um, the judges are like, you know, hey, like, what are you like? You're just doing all this talking and stuff. What is this all about? And Magneto keeps going on, basically like, you know, I've done a lot of bad stuff, but I only done this bad stuff because, well, you know, you guys have hunted mutant kind and done all this bad stuff to me. I had to, not relegate, but you know, push back. Like I had to push back against all this stuff. Everything I've done is because of what you guys have done to us, hunted us, killed us, not letting us go into certain stores and everything. Like this is ridiculous. And then we cut over to Gene and Wolverine while they're watching the news and Gene starts yelling and screaming. She goes, oh, he's coming. Wolverine like, what? what's going on? And pulls out his claws. And he goes, is it Apocalypse? She goes, no, it's the baby. He's coming. And Wolverine's face, he's like, what? <laughs> Look at his face. He's so shocked. Like, this is not a good time for the baby to come. Especially because right after this, the friendly humanity people outside protesting, well, they're starting to charge inside of the of the trial and they're trying to capture Magneto and anybody other, any other mutants that's in the area and take them down. They're also trying to kill the judges. Obviously the judges are like, what? Why are you trying to kill us? What do we do? Magneto starts to smile. He goes, well, you gave a monster a trial. <laughs> so Cyclops, Beast, Morph, uh, Gambit, Bishop, and yeah, that's everybody. They go outside to fight off the friends of humanity while Storm stays inside to protect the um, to protect the judges and everybody else inside, and so does Magneto. At first, they don't really want to take Magneto's guns, I mean, take his collar off, because he could do something, but hey, they have no choice. They're coming in to kill him. Then we get to see a new character called the Executioner, and he has a pun, a, a pun, a ton of weapons on his back and inhibitor collars, and he starts to fight Bishop at first. It was really cool, because he does a backflip and put the inhibitor collar on his neck, and he goes, here's round two, absorb this and shoots him in the back and he goes flying because you know he can absorb energy and diss it back so he put the collar on first and he goes yeah you can absorb that now can you sucker <laughs> i thought that was kind of cool then he starts to fight cyclops and he hits cyclops in the face and takes his visor off so cyclops doesn't want to hurt people so he takes so he has to close his eyes so he can't fight back really he starts punching cyclops in the stomach over and over and over again i was like jeez man while he's doing this he goes you know humans get it bad too but we just don't whine about it. We have the decency not to whine about it. And I was like, what? I mean, I understand, like, you know, even regular people have their own problems, too, with, like, racism or, like, regular skin colors and stuff. But at the same time, so did mutants. Like, you guys, like, people like him literally go out and hunt mutants in the sewers doing nothing wrong. They hunt them down like dogs, and they won't let them do so. Like, you know, I understand what he's trying to say. But at the same time, it's like, nah, you guys do too much to wear. Like, it's not good. It's not really the same. Uh, while he's beating up Cyclops, Morph comes in and saves him. At first, he transforms into Yuriko and fights him off. Then he transforms into, um, not Sentinel. What's Colossus? That was, that's what I meant. And then he transforms into Psylocke and starts to fight him with swords, which is a really cool action scene. And I guess Morph is a better version of Mystique. Because when, as you saw, when he was fighting, um, when he transformed into, into um, Colossus, ex the executioner was shooting him in the chest, and he was like blocking it easily, like regular Colossus would. So I guess he takes the attributes of the actual mutants. Like he's actually hard steel skin, even though he just like a transform. Like you, you get what I'm saying. Like it's not just the looks; it's actually the powers too. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's kind of dope. As you saw, Gene. She used her telekinesis to tell Cyclops to come to her because they got to the hospital with Harin and Jean, but the doctor won't um, deliver the baby because he's a mutant. Obviously, Wolverine's mad about that, so she's calling Cyclops to come here. Cyclops, so he's like, okay. Um, Storm, Magneto, protect the judges while Rogue takes me to go to the hospital. So that's the plan right now. So Rogue flies over, grabs Cyclops, flies him over to the hospital, and then the rogue, she uses her powers to drain other people's life force 
touches the doctor, absorbs all his knowledge about giving birth, and gives Jean's birth, gives <laughs> delivers Jean's baby. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> delivers Jean's baby. I think Magneto, he protects all the judges from all the cannon fire that they're doing to them. It was a really cool scene because Magneto at first grabs like these huge chunk of metal spikes and puts them in front of all the friendly humanity people when they bust in the door. And then Storms uses her lightning, you know, she conjures up some lightning, hits the metal rods, and it makes like an electric barrier so they can't get through. And then the executioner comes in with the mutant gun, shoots at Magneto, Storm sees this, jumps in front of the bullet, and it takes away her powers. And it was a really intense scene because when she gets hit by the bullet, obviously it doesn't like kill her, it just takes her powers away. But you can tell it like really hurts her when it takes her powers away. Because look at that. Like, it looked like it, it did something crazy to her. All these Magneto is really mad. Like, all the judges are like, oh, Magneto, we're so sorry. We didn't mean for this to happen. He goes, no, yes, it did. Look, this is exactly what you people want, isn't it? For us mutants to be just like you, normal, crying on the ground, squabbling like the rats that you think we are. And he takes all of the judges and the executioner and brings them sky high in a really dope scene to where he kind of intimidates them to where, like, you know, my mission was to kill all people like you. These X-Men selfishly fight against the hate and prejudice that you put on them every single day with their awesome powers. And this is their reward? You suit them like dogs? I tried to change to be better. I am changing to be better. To live on in Charles Xavier's dream, my dear friend. To try to like take things peacefully with you people. Please. Do not let me let you down. Obviously, he's kind of a, like a dread because he holds them up sky high so he could drop them at any moment. He could kill them. He normally would kill them, but he wants to go on a different path. So, you know, please do not let me let you down. Eventually, Gene and Cyclops' baby is born. They're able to have it. They named their baby Nathan, and the baby looks you know, like a baby, so <laughs> not really much to show there. We got a nice little heart-to-heart -heart with Magneto and Cyclops when they go back to the X-Mansion. Cyclops like, you know, I don't really trust you that much. But Xavier trusted you, so I guess I got to trust you too. But thank you for what you did today. And uh, Magneto's like, well, I hear that you and Jean are going to leave the X-Men to, you know, take care of the baby. But be careful. Be vigilant. There's still people out there, you know, that hate us. We did a lot of good for mutant kind today. But it wasn't without sacrifice. So he packs Cyclops on the shoulder. Then the very next scene is the Beast analyzing the material inside the gun. Because the gun that shot um, Storm, you know, Magneto took it from the execution, obviously. And he's analyzing it. He goes, well, in the regular collars that they use on us to, like, neutralize our powers, they use a little type of radiation. But this gun uses that same type of radiation, but amplifies it. And when it shot you, it sort of messed up your mutant cell. Well, no, sorry. It uses the radiation and hits you on a cellular level. So the little effect that happens when you put the collar on instantly goes away when you take the collar off. When he starts you with this bullet, now it's happening to you all the time. So you can't use your powers. And for the time being, until I can figure out how to undo it, it seems pretty much permanent. You're kind of human now. Obviously that gives Storm a shock. She doesn't know what to do. It was a really intense scene when she goes back to her room and there's a thunderstorm outside and the lightning hits and the thunder like sound and she gets scared of the thunder. She goes, I just can't do this. And she leaves a note for Jean to read. And while she reads it, we see um, a ton of stuff happening. We see Cyclops taking care of his baby. We see um, Rogue and Magneto hold hands. I guess he, I guess he's able to do that. Because I know Gambit can use his powers to neutralize her powers so they can actually touch. I guess Magneto can do that too. I didn't know that. We see a sweet scene of Morph trying to cheer Wolverine up and he transforms into Sabretooth to fight. So that was kind of funny. And in the letters, he's basically saying that she has to leave. Since he's quote unquote a human now, Gambit also saw what was happening. So he feels kind of sad, obviously. Um, since he's quote unquote human now, they live in two different worlds. So she can't be here. She goes on a different path now. And I was like, what? That sounds kind of stupid to me. Now she's basically saying that humans and mutants can't be friends just because, you know, they're vastly different you know one have powers and one don't i mean obviously it is kind of dangerous to stay at the x mansion anything could pop off and everything like that but still i'm like that's just how i talk it a little bit like you know 
we can't be friends. We can't be sisters or anything because we walk two different paths and now we're so different. I'm like, what? Humans and humans and music could be friends. I mean, I don't really, I don't think the hell she meant it. I guess I'm just not that smart to understand what she's trying to mean. But that's what like, how I kind of took it. I'm like, that's, I don't know if I really you know mess with that. Anyway, after that, we cut over to the rest of the X Men listening to Jean read out the letter. Gambit was like, you know, hey, that bullet was meant for you. You should have been the one to leave, Magneto. And they're all really sad. They keep crying. And Wolf was like, come on, guys. She's not really gone. It's Storm. She'll live like two or three days out there with regular people and figure out it's lame. She'll be right here. She'll be right back at the x Mansion before you know it. And they hit a doorbell ring. He goes, see, that's her. He runs over to the door. The door opens. And it's Jean. And she's all beat up. She goes, I need the X-Men. He grabs her. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's wrong, Gene? He turns around and everybody's looking at Gene. You know, there's two Genes. Like, what is happening? <laughs> and, and Cyclops looks at his baby. He's like, what? Well, you know, what is happening? And then it gets the credits. And then now we got to wait till next week for the episode. Because, you know, they wanted to drop two episodes today or yesterday now. To just, to, you know, you get everybody hype. But everybody's really surprised because now there's two Genes right in front of them. Which one is the real Gene? And Cyclops like, you know, my wife, Jean, just had a baby. Did I have a baby with the real Gene or the fake Gene? Like, this is confusing. And I forgot to show this on the end of the last episode, but they um had a classic outro. And when they saw, like, a video game screen. I guess I can show the scenes I wasn't able to show last episode. Let me pause and show it here. Okay, so at the end of the last episode, um, they were playing basketball. And they were all in their basketball outfits. And Cyclops apologized for being such a jerk for the last couple months I guess because of uh Charles Xavier's disappearing not disappearing but you know him being gone. Magneto broke into his office and then he uh gave um Cyclops a book that basically said like, you know, hey, this is the last will and testament of Charles Xavier. And it says here, hey, he wants everything that he ever owned. The X Men, the mansion, everything belongs to me now. So now you're my X Men. And he also said the line that uh, Cyclops said to me my X-Men. He also says that a lot in the next episode. Well, episode 2 that I just reviewed. I forgot to bring it up, though. But he says it a lot. I thought he was just trying to be on me. Like, you know, yeah, you're my X-Men. But no, I think, I think he actually meant it. But every time he said to me, my X-Men. Every time he said that, I thought it was just so funny. <laughs> I don't know why I, like, chuckled. Like, <laughs> he keeps saying it. Like, like, part of me kept thinking, oh, he just keeps saying it just to say it. But no, I think he, like, actually means it. And then, yeah, that's episode 2. So, like I said, I said it was going to come out Friday, but I was able to uh, just bang it out here before I have to go to class, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, that's episode two. So, I, if we got to wait till next Wednesday for episode uh, three, I should be on time for episode three because I'm really late for episode two and one. But I'm going to try to stay up till three o'clock or, or just go to bed early and then wake up at three so I can do episode three on time. But that's the episode. So, like, say, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching. I think you'll all there be one of the human beings, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right.